everyone, I'm Kelly from Kelly Kid, and today we're going to learn how to make guacamole and we're going to learn about knife safety. So before we get started, we always wash our hands and we make sure we have all of our ingredients and supplies. So for this recipe, we will use two avocados, a lime, a tomato, half an onion, cilantro, and salt. And for our supplies, we need a big bowl to mix everything in a masher for our avocados, or you could use a fork. We need a spatula or a spoon to mix, and we're going to need our cutting board and knife, and a measuring spoon for our salt. Uh, over here, I also have a little bowl that will collect our trash, so we don't have to take so many trips to the trash can. So now that we have everything, we're ready to get started with cooking. Um, and I'm gonna demo a little bit about how we use our knife before we actually get started with our ingredients. So first is that you always wanna be really careful when using a knife. You don't want to pick it up and move at the same time. Um, if there's a counter behind you, you don't really wanna go quickly from counter to counter because there could be other people in the kitchen. Um, you wanna make sure you're um, paying attention to where the blade is, it's being safe, it's always down, um, it's never you know, pointed towards somebody or towards you. You wanna be careful about picking it up and know what you're doing, where you're grabbing. Obviously right here we've got, right here is the sharp blade, so you don't wanna to touch that. So we're, uh, when we're gripping our knife, we are pinching it right at the blade and the handle, right where they meet, and wrapping the rest of our fingers around our knife um, handle. So this is what we're doing with our dominant hand. Our other hand has to hold the food so we always use a bear claw. We turn our fingers underneath in a little bear claw, and we're gonna use that to hold down our food while we are chopping. So that way our knife is not going to get our fingers. That is very important. So uh, we also, I'm gonna show you, we have this little um, silicone pad, which is uh, sticky. Uh, which we're using to stabilize our cutting board. So that's part of knife safety as well, and I'll show you why. So if our cutting board is here and it moves around, when we are cutting something on the cutting board, it's gonna move around, you're trying to hold it with your fingers, your knife might move, um, and that is very unsafe. So if you do have a board that does move around like this, you want to make sure you stabilize it. So I'm using this silicone pad, which you can see, keeps that right in place. Now, if you don't have one of those, you could very easily actually use a wet paper towel. So all you have to do is just dampen it, wring out the moisture and put it underneath and it'll do the exact same thing um, and keep it nice and sturdy. Uh, so we're gonna learn a few different knife uses and chops today with our guacamole. Um, and we're going to make sure that we're safe the whole time. So uh, let's get started with making our guacamole. So, We'll get started with our avocados, the base of our guacamole. We've got two here. And so you wanna make sure your avocados are ripe, that they are dark brown instead of bright green. You wanna squeeze them and see that they have a little bit of a give to it. And you can always, if you're not sure, test by pressing in the core and that should move. And that's how you know that you've got a ripe avocado. Mine aren't quite, quite as ripe, I think, as they could be. Um, and that's okay, but all it means is it might take just a little bit more effort to mash. If you have a super ripe avocado, super easy to cut, super easy to mash. Um, let's see how we cut these things open. All right, so if you haven't cut an avocado before, there's a huge pit right in the center. So you actually have to cut around it. You can't cut through it. So we're grabbing our knife correctly, using our bear claw, and I'm going to slice right down Okay, and then turn the avocado very, very carefully. And then come down because now the pit is, um, my blade is in front of where the pit is, so I can come right down like that. Okay, and now you're gonna take both sides and give it a little twist like that. Ah, avocado, awesome. So that's, yeah, that was a pretty big pit that you can't get through. Um, the other thing that we will need will be um, a spoon. So let's grab our bowl 
and we're just gonna scoop this out uh, with our spoon. Like I said, mine are not quite as ripe, so they're not like, oh, they're giving me a little bit of a hard time. Um, so if yours are like a little bit mushier, they'll just pop right out. So that's good. I have a little bit of skin left on there, so I'm just gonna re reach in. So we don't need this skin, we put that in our trash bowl. And now uh, let's see if this will work. So with like a very kid-friendly way to get our avocado pit out is to just bake it and squeeze it. Whoop, there we go, pit is out. So there's other ways to do it. You could try to scoop it out. Um, some people use the blade of their knife where they'll take this and go whack right into your pit and give it a twist. Um, but that's not really quite as safe. And then if you're also using a kid safe knife, that won't really work here. Um, so we're going to scoop this one out as well. Now we're going to do the same exact thing with our other avocado, but you may be able to see that my hands are kind of covered in avocado and it's slippery. So this is not safe to use our knife like this. So we're going to take a minute, wash our hands, um, and make sure we're able to hold our avocado firmly. Okay, so now we are ready to move on to our next avocado. And we're gonna do the same exact thing. So I'm holding my knife correctly with a pinch at the blade and the handle and fingers wrapped around the handle. And I'm going down right into the center of the avocado. this. And again, being really careful. I twisted it, by the way, and then sliced down again until I felt the knife hit the pit. And that's as far as I can go, twisting again, it's still along the pit. And now I think it's not, so we're gonna slice down. And then when you do something around like that, you wanna make sure your blade has gone all the way through. And then again, we're giving it a twist. We'll pop out that pit. And then scoop both of these into our bowl. And so we're all set with our avocado for now. Again, we're gonna wash our hands and come back for our next step. Okay, so next I wanna mash these. Uh, so that way I will add everything else and we can just give it a mix. So I'm going to take my knife and put it at the top of my board where it is not going to get knocked into as I'm doing something else. It's safe and out of the way. So I'm taking my masher and I'm gripping it um, down like this, and I'm just going to mash down and keep going. And again, like I said, mine are a little bit harder than I would typically like, so it's taking a little bit of extra muscle, but if you have super ripe avocados, um, it'll take almost no effort at all, and you'll be done in no time. So I'm going to take a minute and mash these up and then show you the consistency that we're looking for. Okay, so it took a little bit of effort to get these started, but now um, it's matching up nice and easy. So, excess off of my masher and show you what we've got. So, we've got a pretty chunky guacamole. So, if you want your smoother, you can keep going. If you can mash it finer with a fork, but I'm fine with this consistency. Um, we got some pieces, we got some mash. So this looks good for my purposes. So I'm gonna set this bowl to the side because as we keep cutting the rest of our ingredients, they're just gonna go right in there and we'll mix at the end. And so our next ingredient that we're gonna add is going to be our lime. So this just requires one slice because we're just gonna juice it. So we're gonna take our lime. Uh, I'm gonna squeeze it, roll it around a little bit to make it easier to juice. This is a fun little sensory activity as well. Um, limes can be kind of hard, so um, try to put in some muscle and squish it around until you know it has a little bit more give. 
And this can be kind of tricky to cut because it is quite round. So you wanna make sure you're holding it firmly, but that you're not getting your fingers in the way of the knife, right? So putting it on our cutting board, got our fingers tucked underneath in our bare claw, grab our knife safely and find the middle. And we're going to go down and there we go, we've got half a line. So put half of that to the side and we're gonna squeeze all this juice into this avocado. So we're gonna use all of our muscles. We're gonna put it between our hands like this and just squeeze our fingers down. Whoops, running down my hand a little bit. Squeeze our fingers down. If that's a little bit too tricky, go ahead and take both hands. Okay, squeeze it until you got no more juice in there. So I also move it around to squeeze it from different angles. Okay. Feel pretty good about that. And I'm just gonna give this a little mix so I can start integrating with my avocados. The acid also helps it to stop from browning. So if you leave your avocados out for a while, either sliced or in a guacamole, then they might start to brown, but um, typically lime juice or lemon juice will help stop that. Um, okay. Let's keep going. We're gonna add our tomato next. So uh, you wanna make sure to give this a rinse beforehand. Um, I've already rinsed it off, so I'm good to go. And what we're going for is a dice, which means a very small, small cube. Uh, so this is pretty big, so we might not use the whole thing. But what we're gonna do is we're going to slice it this way first, and then we're going to slice our slices into sticks. And then we're gonna slice yet another time and slice our sticks into dices, into cubes. So let's go, let's do about half of this. So I'm gonna slice down, and I want the next one to be about the same width. So I'm slicing down. Slicing down, same width. Let me do one more. Okay. We'll set this part to the side, because I think we've got enough. The only thing with tomatoes is probably don't want the core so as I'm cutting I'm going to look out for that and then just throw it into my trash bowl um, if it's a little too hard to eat. So I'm going to line these up two at a time now. See so I've got two pieces of tomato and we're going to do our sticks pieces which means so they're laying down we're going to slice them together and you want them to be about the same width as your slices you just did. So we've got this stick of tomato. Okay, same width all the way through. We're going to do it again. And if it's too slippery, especially for tomatoes, it kind of is, feel free to not do it in stacks if that feels too iffy to you. So go ahead and get those sticks. We're going to put the sticks to the side. And we're going to do the same thing with this one. So slice, slice. time with that cork it's a little tough and now I'm going to take this I'm putting my knife down take this pile and just give it a turn so now what's happening is I have all my sticks lined up horizontally on the cutting board I'm going to keep cutting like this in the same thickness and see what I get are these dices fantastic so those are going right into our bowl of guacamole. So we're gonna keep going and get all those dices. Dice, 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 dice. Awesome. Again, I'm picking through. I don't like these core pieces. Those are too tough. Okay. Pushing those to the side and I'm gonna finish up these sticks. So I'm turning these. I'm doing this because you want to always have your knife straight and turn your food, right? So we don't want to turn our knives. That's going to give us bad posture. It's going to be tricky. It's going to be unsafe. So always turn the food and use the knife in the same position, the same comfortable direction. Okay, so we're slicing these sticks crossways. If you feel uncomfortable doing multiple pieces at a time, Go ahead and spread them out and do one at a time. Another core piece. Okay, and some 
them will be like a little bit, tomatoes have these juicy seeds. So I'm gonna go through and pick up just the pieces that have real, real pieces of tomato and throw those into my bowl. So you see I'm left with some of these more juicy, seedy pieces. Um, we don't really need or want those, so I'm just gonna um, throw them out and wash my hands and also just wipe down my board a little bit because it is pretty juicy from the tomatoes. We wanna make sure the next item we put on our cutting board doesn't slip and slide around due to that. So we're tidying up before moving on to the next step. Okay, so we're ready for our next item, which is going to be the onion. So I already do have half an onion here, which is about how much we need. You want like half of a small onion um, or maybe a quarter of a larger onion. So for the onion, we have these little um, layers in it. So this is gonna help us with our dice. We actually only need to do two cuts this time. That is after you cut your onion in half. So if you don't have half an onion already, you're going to cut it in half with your knife and you're gonna have to peel off the skin. It's papery um, and all that. So get rid of that papery skin until you're left with this nice skin of onion. You know, not skin of onion, but you get it. Until you get to the onion. Uh, then there's gonna be a little piece here and I have already chopped that off. Um, that is gonna help you with your peeling. Um, it's usually, you know, not, not very great. It's gonna help us with our cutting. And now you see our onion is lying flat on the cutting board ready to go. So we're going to do this with while the onion is intact. So I'm going to start making cuts from here all the way down to here, vertically like this, but I'm not gonna go all the way through. I'm keeping this little root intact so it helps us with our cutting. So, like I said, going vertically. So our root is at the top of the cutting board and I'm going about an inch away or so, maybe a little less, and I'm cutting down vertically. And then moving over a bit and going still not through the root, but all the way down in the front. Okay, still not through the root. And one more. Okay, so you see this is what I have. All these pieces. So these are like our sticks, but we have kept them intact. So now we're going to cut very thin slices off the front. So I've turned it with my root to the side because we're turning our food and not our knives. And let's see what we get from that. So if we pull all of these apart because of our layers, oops, we actually have these little dices. So that's really cool. So the onion is helping us already with that and so when those are done we're going to put them into the bowl as well and if you so happen to see any that come apart and are a little bit bigger um these ones you can just give it another slice okay push the done ones to the side and we're going to keep going and i want i want little pieces of onion so i'm going as thin as possible here so very small piece and just slicing all the way down Slicing all the way down, another, 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 another. See some of these pieces on the end are a little big, so I cut that, and I'm going to cut that, that, that. Okay. So, once again, we're pulling apart, if we pull apart our layers, we have our little diced pieces of onion. In we go. So I'm going to gather them all up and put them in the bowl. Pulling apart our layers a little bit as I do it. Okay, onions can make your eyes hurt a little bit, so be careful. That's another reason why it's easiest to cut an onion like that because it kind of keeps it all together and doesn't expose you as much to the, um, the chemical, I guess, that it lets off, um, which interacts with your eyes and makes you cry sometimes. So this is a little bit easier on your eyes. Okay, look 
looking really good and colorful. And we've got two ingredients left. So next we're gonna do our cilantro. And I'm gonna show you two ways you could do this because one is um, tearing it with your hands and the other is chopping. So let's put our knife to the side for now and grab our cilantro. And the first thing that you're gonna do, no matter which step you're doing, is tear the leaves off the stems. Uh, some people don't mind the leaves and it depends on what you're eating, um, but I don't, I mean, sorry, because some people don't mind the stems. Uh, and it will depend on what you're using it for, but in my guacamole, I just like the leaves. So tear off the stems, put them to the side, put them in our garbage bowl, and peel off our leaves. And we're making a little pile to make our cutting nice and easy. So you see, we just have a little pile here. We're just going for about a tablespoon, maybe even a little less. And I'll show you tearing at first. So you can just take a leaf, one or two at a time. And now we don't want this whole big leaf. It might be a little overpowering. So I'm gonna tear it with my fingers really small into small pieces and a bunch of times. I'm gonna show you. So I'm still tearing, but I have these little pieces of leaf now because um, I've torn them up. So that is what's going into my bowl. I'm keeping the big leaf in my hands and tearing off from there, okay? And there you go. So you keep going and do that with the whole pile. Part of knife safety is if you're worried about using a knife, if it makes you uncomfortable or you're still learning, if you don't have to use it, don't use it. So we can think of other ways and other tools um, to get the same result, even if that tool is just our hands. Uh, but if you want to learn another way to cut, I will show you. So we have a pile. We want to keep this piled up. And um, a little differently than how we were using our bear claw before. We're actually going to put our, our hand on top of our knife completely flat out. So we're not putting our fingers down, so they're not going to get in the way of the blade at all. We're going to keep it completely flat. And we're going to use this to steady our knife and rock it back and forth. Okay? So this is a technique that you would use when you're cutting something small like herbs or like garlic, um, where you can't really grab onto the leaf so much and do our bear claw technique as easily as you could with something bigger. So then we're turning our pile, rebunching it and doing it again. Okay, keeping that hand flat and you're using it to kind of support, keep the knife where you want it, and you just rock the knife back and forth, back and forth, okay. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to scrape this into here. If you are using a sharp like knife like mine, you need to be careful of scraping something off the edge with your finger, you to be really careful so uh, where the blade is, so uh, I don't recommend doing that unless you're really, really confident. Um, and then also don't necessarily use your knife to scrape it, especially the blade part. So the blade will come into your hand and that's really not safe. If you must, it's better to use the back or uh, use your hands. Or if you have uh, something called a bench scraper, you can scrape with that because that doesn't have a blade. So in we go. And again, a little bit messy hands, so I'm gonna give them a rinse and then tell you the last couple steps. Okay, so we have finished with our knife. We do have one more ingredient, but we're done with our cutting board and knife. So, uh, and especially if you have a lot of other things in the sink, you don't wanna necessarily put your knife in the sink. So if somebody's doing dishes, whether it's you or somebody else and you, you forgot, uh, you don't wanna stick your hand in there and hit a knife. So we're gonna put this off to the side over here. So I know it's dirty, it needs to be cleaned, but it's not going to get in my way when I'm doing other things. Our cutting board will go in the sink though, and our soap pad will go off to the side. Now, we need to get our salt in there. So uh, we're gonna do a quarter teaspoon of salt. So that's the one slash four teaspoon. And we're going to measure that out. I'm pouring nice and slow. Get an even amount, 
and sprinkle it in. A quarter teaspoon is pretty small, so you could also eyeball it. You could just do a couple of shakes uh, from a salt shaker, not from that one. You could pour some into your hand and do, and do a couple pinches. So those are all of our ingredients. So we're ready to mix. So let's go. So I've got my spatula. You could use a spoon and you want to just mix it all together to get all those flavors together. So scrape that off a bit. I'm using one hand to stabilize the bowl and I'm using the other to incorporate it all together. I want to make sure that it is to my liking, so I'm going to give it a little taste. Mm. So good. So taste, make sure you have enough salt, cilantro, lime juice, all of that. If you want more, you can definitely add more to it. But you see it came together pretty quickly, and I hope it took some of the intimidation out of using a knife. If you know how to use it, if you know some rules and boundaries, then you can use the knife totally safely. Um, so I hope that you can try this or a similar recipe at home and feel confident that you can now make it safely. So enjoy your guacamole and your new knife skills.